All right. All right. Yo. Yo. Hey, what's up, the kids? What's up, the kids? Uh, it's Tom and Zeus with another episode of Shouting Cloudcast. I'm not fucking editing this, Tom. Uh, this is episode 42. We're calling this one the, the Paul Lynn Halloween special. Um, Guess what this one's about, Tom? How the fuck are you? Kids. <laughs> Holy shit. So before we started rolling, Tom said that out loud. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, I just lost it. We haven't even uh, got we haven't even gotten started. We're already losing our shit. Oh god. Anyways, how the fuck are you, buddy? Oh actually I've been I've been sick all week, dude. I don't know. I know you were sick last week. Now it's my turn. I've been yeah. dying. Yeah, definitely. I'm still trying to get over it too. It sucks, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's not good. But it's it's Thursday, and the Kiss Army needs us, so we gotta right. we gotta we gotta deliver. Yeah, absolutely, gotta deliver. Um, so uh, other than feeling like shit, um, life is good. Yeah, everything's going well. You know, uh, fall is in the air. All that kind of business. We're recording two months from Christmas Eve. Holy shit, dude. October 24th. The fuck did the time go? Gone. I know. I know. It's crazy. Right. It's, it's crazy. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, so, oh, we're going to go into uh, what? You want to go into Kiss Talk first or you want to talk about last week's episode? What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about last week's episode. We'll just do some episode recap like we like to do because... We we kind of said that going into our ep- episode w- when we reviewed Unmask last week. Um, we talked about how polarizing that was, and holy crap! I think of maybe the most interactive in terms of social media commentary for an episode we've ever had, huh? Absolutely. Um, I told you. Um, I I find that this this album, Daryl Alber, who we love, who does all the media and stuff for Pantheon uh, podcast uh, put a clip together of me saying that for this episode that this is why I like doing a podcast with you this is so different and a lot of Kiss fans are different about this album some love it some hate it so it's funny because I'm going to name drop um, I was texting with our new best friend uh, our uh, AEW champion Chris Jericho uh, I said he loved the episode. I said, what do you think How, about the album? And he mentioned some songs that he liked. And I, I told him this is the most polarizing album. He's like, more than The Elder? Like, Absolutely. Yep. Most people, I would say 75% of the people hate The Elder. Elder. 25% of people are into it. Versus this, I think it's 50-50. Well, I think, yeah, I think the big difference with Unmasked and The Elder is that I think the people... <clears throat> I think there's such the crowd seems see, to love it. I think unmasked. I think the people that like unmasked, I think they they like passionately really like unmasked. And I think the people that hate unmasked, such as yourself, I think they passionately hate it. I think the elder, I think people like, yeah, you know, it's kind of a fucking weird album, but I, I like it. It's got some good songs. You know, I, I think, but I unmasked is like, oh no, 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 that, that album's terrible. You know, no, but I, 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 Listen, one of the funny things is you'll get a kick out of this. I I said to to Chris that I'm like as, as far as the unmask goes, there are people like my partner Tom and your boy Sonny Pooney who see the pop brilliance in it. Yep. And his response to me real fast was, "I fucking hate Sonny Pooney." Oh, And guess what? We're getting we're getting t-shirts made. Maybe our buddy Ed from Click T can make t-shirts. On the front it says who the fuck is Sonny Pooney? On the back I'll say I fucking hate Sonny Pooney. <laughs> oh, we we love we love our friend. We love Sonny. Oh, we're just, absolutely. We're, obviously we're goofing. I know, and so is Chris. But I just think that's hilarious. But I really believe in it. You guys, there's a a, a section of you guys that are just adamant. Oh, we have fucking the Thompsons twins did this song. It'd be a top 40 hit easily. Yep. But Kiss does it. 
But the way I see it is you take that song and you put it in that Borat video. Oh, beautiful. This is the brilliance. What a great job Daryl did with it. Didn't it fit? It, it fit, fit perfectly. Yeah. He, Daryl nailed it. Yep. And, I found and, out. and then, yeah. And then late and then uh, earlier today, again, we're recording on Thursday, the 24th. He put together another video for us. Well, yeah. Another, the who's uh, the boss in the tomorrow, tomorrow mashup. Yep. Cause but we had, I cause could, we had talked, we had talked about how tomorrow sounded like, you know, an eighties cheesy, you know, sitcom theme. So we kind of like, make- I like a Gene Simmons, the demons, <laughs> my brother Bilo has a demon inside his head. <laughs> bing that's bong, bing bong, bing. And that's why we put him in a cage. <laughs> Borat pretty much. Yeah. Oh. Um, but the whole thing with, I think unmasked is. It's just got that, to me, it's got that whole new vibe, and it's not an album that was done in between, um, I don't know, rock and roll. It's not in the rock and roll over, in between Love Gun and uh, Destroyer. It was an album done between Dynasty and Unmasked. In, uh, in, um, Elder. What, Elder. It, it, it can't fit. Like They can't go out on a limb three albums in a row like it just oh yeah right i think i think that's one of the big things that hurt it as well yeah no i i I agree but i mean the the comments on there was it was it was and and that's what we love to talk about and you know on the show here and then on social media because you know everybody loves love gun everybody loves harder than hell every you know whatever some people may love it more than the other but when you bring up an album like unmasked and then you know there's going to be other albums in their discography, you know, we start covering other polarizing things like, you know, Carnival of Souls, The Elder, al- albums like that. You're going to, you know, those are the, that's when the discussions gets fun, I think. Yeah. But the thing is, I think Unmask more than Carnival Souls, more than the other one that's kind of polarizing, which I think is Crazy Nights. Um, oh. And they can say Hot in the Shade Hot and stuff. The, yeah. I think there are more people that really like Unmask. Then really like Carnival Souls, that really like Cl- Crazy Nights, that really like Hot in the Shade. There Probably. are more people that like Unmask, and there's just as many. So that's why I think it's so polarizing. Yeah, that no, was interesting for sure. It was a good episode. We had fun with it, so definitely. Oh, absolutely. Album reviews for us are always a great amount of fun. The feedback, the comments, um, the, you know, all over the map of this is my favorite song. I love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and speaking of favorite song, one of the the, the Monday poll that we did, we kind of threw out some different options. Uh, a lot of people really like "Is That You," um, which doesn't surprise me. That's probably one of the more you know quote unquote rock songs on the album. Um, you know, a lot of people big fans of Naked City. Another one that you could maybe consider you know a rock type song. Um, you know, people a lot of love for the Ace songs. You know. Yeah, a lot of hatred towards a lot of the lyrics for those ace songs. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Nobody, I don't think anybody takes those ace songs too seriously. I mean, I don't Poor think anybody should be taking. And- yeah, I don't think anybody should be it. taking the album too seriously. But yeah, it's kind of ugh. well. It is, yeah, it is what it is. How are the other polls that we did? I think we have some other polls going on right now. Yeah, so the the Zeus uh, Tom poll for Thursday. So we did something a little different. We did the uh, Love Gun versus. Um, destroyer era costumes and we're you know as of right now again you guys are going to hear this on saturday so the poll will probably be over by then but right now it's like literally like a 50 50 clean split on facebook it's amazing we got about as of right now over 500 votes and it's like dead the, the the percentages are so close that when you have a facebook poll that is so close it's broken down into tenths of a point so the last time I checked, it was like 49.6 to 50.4 or whatever. Um, wow. wow. Twitter, Twitter, not as many votes, but uh, Love Gun's running away with it on Twitter. So I I, I can't see how that is. I, Destroyer, Peter's outfit alone should give it to Destroyer. And there's no major cod piece on Gene in Destroyer. And I love Paul. Paul can Paul can make that that Destroyer outfit work for him. Oh yeah, that little one piece. <laughs> He's got his all Paul Stanley chest hair out. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wear the required. Yeah, yeah. I wear the I wear the required uniform. Yeah, tights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, I think it, those. Uh, but then, then I had you know, I, I don't want to give a maybe a future spoiler away, but some somebody somebody suggested your, the next one needs to be Dynasty versus the Elder Era costumes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dynasty vs. Asylum cover. Oh, oh, God. We'll get into that. Absolutely. Um, so, anything on uh, Kiss News? Honestly, n- this is the... We've been doing... was this? Episode 42, 43? I'm losing track here. This is the first week I haven't come across anything. Uh, and, if, and if I've missed something, then I'm a bad Kiss fan. Uh, they're still a couple weeks away before starting back up in Australia. Um... I, I just haven't really heard anything. I don't know. What about you? Well, you know, the big thing is, is the Kiss Cruise. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Kiss Cruise is what, six days away now? Yep. Kiss Fest. Uh, the Cruise, cruise Fest. Fest. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's cruise coming Fest. up. Um, I think that's Joe D'Angelo sets that up. And I think what ba- Sebastian Bach is playing, Fraley's Comet will be Return of the Comet. Ace will be there. Bob um, Kulik. There's a f- yep. Yep. Um, Sounds like a lot of fun, and I hope it's uh, people get to tell us what that was like. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be there, so please rub it in and tell us how good it was, right? Absolutely, yeah. We can't wait to see all that on social media for sure when that think, kicks off. Yeah, and Peter will be down there that weekend, right? Yes, he down there. Yeah, yeah. So, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Someone let me know how he's doing. Maybe they'll run into Vinny. Oh God. <laughs> Vinny's Vinny, Vinny's Vinny's doing uh, his cruise. He's doing it on a fucking kayak. It's just room for one, room for one person. Him. It's the fucking the Vinny, Vinny Vincent kayak cruise. <laughs> fucking Vinny Vincent Al Wife Brook Parkway. Fucking. <laughs> He'll be driving the friggin' SS Minnow with fucking Peter. The will skipper. be the be the fucking skipper. <laughs> hey, little buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, don't call, me, don't call me little buddy. Um, yeah. So other than the cruise and stuff, we, we can't wait to see what that stuff is like, how it went, how uh, the shows went, and please fill in it, fill it in, uh, and give us a heads up on how everything looked and stuff. Yeah. Um, so ready to dive in? Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Before we get into this uh, exciting episode here. Uh, give me a few seconds here. Let's take a break. I got to brush up on all my show tunes. Thanks for waiting. Stan to pain. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Stan to oh, pain. Boy. All right. Um, all right. So we're doing the Paul Lynn Halloween special. It's the Paul Lynn Halloween Special, starring Paul Lynn, with Paul's special guests, Tim Conway, Roz, Pinky, Tuscadero, Kelly, Margaret Hamilton, Billy Hayes, Billy Barty, special guest star, Florence Henderson, a special appearance by Betty White, and a rock and roll explosion, Kiss. And now, the Paul Lynn Halloween Special. Um, I remember when we talked about it, I'm like, hey, let's do the Paul Lind Halloween special. And you're like, dude, that's like fucking 15 seconds. I'm like, what are you talking about? We can't, he's like, can't do a whole episode on that. I'm like, sure we can. It's like, Kiss is only on it for a little bit. And then tell us about Kissology, really. Yeah. So um, it's amazing because Kissology only has a very sh- small uh, abbreviated portion of their uh, appearance on this kissology only includes a, uh, the clip of them uh, talking to Paul Lind and some of the characters and then King of the Nighttime World. There's a lot yeah. more that they did on this uh, that for some reason is not on kissology. And that makes no sense to me. I don't understand that. Licensing at all. licensing. I believe that's what it is. Yeah. But so, if they got, but if they got one clip from it, why couldn't they have gotten the other clips? You know what I mean? It's all from the same show. Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so Paul Lind was like some sort of like the fucking, I don't know, Wayne Brady of the era, like guest host or guest special guest star on a million TV shows during that time. He's like some comedian, flamboyant comedian. And he was 
famous for being the the middle square on Hollywood Squares. Yep, he was actually. like the uncle on Bewitch, and he, he had like you know a, the type of reputation that he could help out any show and be great. Unfortunately, the guy couldn't carry a show. We know a lot of people like that. Great side characters, but he can't be the main guy. Happens all the fucking time. So um, I guess one of his big thing because he, I don't know, big getter for ABC. They gave him a special, and um, so he booked on his show Kiss, which was I think the first prime time that Kiss was on. That's correct. That was their first prime time appearance. Yes. Yeah, they had the other shows, but those were like the midnight thing and what do you call it? Like the Mike Don the, Kirsch- like Yeah, those are Don Kirshner's rock concert. Mike Lutt, Doug. Those were all like daytime or like or like midnight, like after hour yeah. type things. Yeah. So, but this was the first prime time. Yep. And uh, it's a, a variety show. You know the ones from the seventies guys. Uh, it obviously starred Paul Lind. He had uh, Margaret Hamilton, who was that witch, the Wicked Witch of the West from Dorothy and uh, the Wizard of Oz. Yep. Uh, somebody named Billy Hayes. She played some witch character during that hour too. Billy Barty, that little midget guy, he yep. was in everything in the 70s and 80s. Everything. Huge. huge. Any anytime there was like a midget in any movie, he was in there. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, the slapstick Tim Conway, right? He was in a big star in the 70s. Tim Conway was great. Not I don't know if he was great in Not this. this. We'll get yeah. into that, but yeah. Who's that? Dwarf on golf? <laughs> <laughs> I'd ra- I would have rather watched that. <laughs> Remember Dwarf. how popular <laughs> Dwarf was? I would have rather watched Dwarf than this. <laughs> who else? Who else? We got. A, we got. We got an. We got, a, we got an, uh, right. an appearance from Betty White. Yeah, who looks the like almost the same, and it's just Betty yep. White. And, and we she's got, still we, fucking kicking. We got an un, an unbilled surprise appearance from Donnie and Marie Osmond, a very young Donnie and Marie Osmond at that time. And Donnie in in Donnie's fucking front picket fence teeth popping out um but other than kiss had, uh, other no, than no, kiss we're not done yet i know i know more. i know but I, I, the one who steals the show oh absolutely steals the goddamn show in my opinion was the porn star <laughs> go ahead pinky tuscadero who her name her real name was what roz kelly yeah but- what the fuck but that's not who I was going to say. Oh, that's not who you were going to say steals the show? I think she was like porn star ready. The absolute show stopper from this entire thing is oh, Mrs. Oh, Brady, oh. Florence Henderson. And when, I say sh- <laughs> and when I say show stopper, I don't mean that necessarily as a compliment. And we'll get oh. into that. We'll get into that as we kind of dissect this show. Oh, I thought you were going to say Pinky Tuscadero. No, she I love Pinky. I, I, rack, I would rack going. She was like. Porn star fucking pin up material back then. I would have oh, rather I would have rather seen Leather Tuscadero. <laughs> Susie Quattro. <laughs> so this so this so while Zeus catches his breath. Oh go go ahead. Did you want to talk about the cast a little bit more? No, nah, I'm just gonna say that was the fucking cast. And it was uh it came on Halloween uh around Halloween era, October 29th, 1976 on ABC. Yeah, and it aired only once. <laughs> so, Thank fucking God. Um, so, it, it, uh, so the clips were included on Kissology. The 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 uh, the, the special in its entirety um, was made available on DVD in two thousand and seven. Um, right now, it's available on Amazon Prime if you have that, or you just go to YouTube. The Amazon Prime quality is the exact same. It's not like it's been remastered or anything. So it's out there and. I strongly urge everybody before you continue listening to this episode, or if you want to do like a, uh, you know, watch along, you have to see this. You have to watch this. It it is so fucking bizarre. (laughs) I wish I'm telling you, I wish I was an adult in the seventies because whatever the fuck they were all on when they were filming this thing. Holy shit. Who found this funny? Who's on this laugh track? Like, who's like, oh, that's a good joke. Like, the whole. F- the, not only that, there's n- other than the occasional appearance from the witch in like the little haunted house segment. There's nothing fucking Halloweenish about this. Nothing. No, nothing. The, n- none of the stupid skits. Yeah, it's 
just it's bizarre. Well, real quick, here's before we get into it, here's a, I got a, a quote here oh, from. Oh, by the uh, way, it, it, before oh, you get into that, yeah, yeah go ahead. Just as we're going by the cast. Yeah. One of the writers on this was that guy that writes all the jokes for all the comedians for all the award shows. That Bruce Valanche guy, whatever oh, his name that, is, the that, yeah, Bruce Valanche. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote this. He was yeah, one well, of the writers, the comedians. Yeah, he should be fired. <laughs> and he was telling. There's a YouTube clip of him telling stories. I was looking online and stuff of this stuff, and he was down. Ow, oh, how are you doing? It's like they were trying to out flamboyant each other. <laughs> I, I mean, holy After shit! After watching that clip. I think I'm gay now. Uh, not, not that there's anything wrong with that, to quote not Jerry Seinfeld. Anything, I'm just saying. I just think I am. I don't know. So so we, a couple quotes here. So in the Kiss book, Behind the Mask. Um, so Rock and Roll Over was recorded in, um, in, in uh, September of 76. And then that fall, they made their first primetime appearance on the Paul Lynn special. According to Bill Coin, quote, the producers asked us to appear, and at first I said no. When they explained how we fit into the concept for the show, I knew it was right. The appearance was well received. The appearance was well received and pushed their career up a bit more. Mass exposure helps in small doses. How did you fit into the concept for the show? There, there, there is no concept for this show. Oh. The whole thing's a fucking bizarro. <laughs> You know, and then I got, and then uh, one more quote here before we get into it, and this is from uh, in Peter Chris's book. He said, um, "We flew to L.A. to tape Paul Lind's Halloween TV special. My mom was thrilled. Paul Lind was her favorite comedian. My mom loved gay people, and she thought he was the funniest." <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. He says. Paul, uh, Peter says, we were a little out of place on the show with guests like Margaret Hamilton, Tim Conway, Florence Hennison, Betty White, Donnie Marie Osmond. This should have been a wake-up call. We were rapidly leaving the rock and roll rebel label behind us and winding up as Hollywood pablum. Ooh. <laughs> My mom loved gay people. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Peter. Settle down, guy that wrote fucking friggin... <laughs> I can't stop the rain. You're not rocked enough. Come on. <coughs> hey, he didn't down, Peter. Hey, come on, be nice. That's your boy. You know, ain't dumping on him. I know, but like don't I don't want to hear like that it was his idea they weren't rocking enough. Come on. I I know I know what you're saying. So want to break this down? What what how the story goes? You want me to? You want to do it? Go you ahead. Go. Start. You kick kick it off. Shoot. So this awful fucking program starts with me singing like Santa Claus. Oh my god! And uh, then the wicked witch of the West is like normally dressed, and she's like his housekeeper, and says like it's yep. not Christmas. Then he's dressed like the Easter Bunny. It's not Easter. Then he's singing some My Funny Valentine. It's not Valentine's Day. It's Halloween. But you know what I noticed in that clip? And you're gonna fucking think I'm, I don't know. But my mind's gotta go somewhere watching this stuff. The Wicked the Witch of the West has a like pretty solid boobs for an old lady. Oh Jesus Christ Almighty! What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Look at the clip, guys! What the fuck? The uh, Wicked Witch of the West looks like she got a boob job. I, I I think for the first time on this podcast, I think I'm speechless. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about here now. <laughs> Just, no, it's, no, she's got some pretty pretty tight rack there for a oh, fucking my. nine year old witch. Jesus Anyways, Christ. <laughs> we're looking at the wicked witch's boobs. Uh, um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's gonna be full of witches, spooks, strange creatures of the night. Sounds like the Hollywood squares. <laughs> uh, Those and that's are the jokes. Oh yeah, that's the first of many horrible, horrific <laughs> jokes. And I'll tell you right now, and it's funny because I'm wondering, was this? Do you think that this was written? Like to be corny and and like quote like kind of unfunny, yeah. Wait, do you think, think that was? You, he's, I think that's he him. Like he's so no, it is I, like stupid and like people like that. I don't know. It's just but this but corny, awful jokes. It was brutal. I mean, oh. I, I mean, it was it was entertaining because it was so like what the fuck stupid. Oh. <laughs> oh, but and then, then he, he gets, pops out. Oh god, out of like a pumpkin hole. 
And I'm like, that, that looks did, like one of those glory holes. That, that didn't fucking, sound. That, that, didn't I was fucking, just going to say, that did not sound. Paul Lind should like be nowhere near. Hole. Paul Lind should be nowhere near a fucking pumpkin hole. Okay. Not like a fucking Greenwich <laughs> Village bathroom stall with a hole in it. And if that's not weird enough, what's the title of the first song that he sings? <laughs> Go ahead. Kids. Kids. <laughs> so this guy. Decides, <laughs> decides, this guy decides to kick off his Halloween special <laughs> with a song about kids. <laughs> wait, a it's, wait a minute. You know what the funny part is? Like some of the words they were using him and the witch before they started going into kids was the innuendos. I heard him say in that segment, soap on a rope. There's a kid in my bathroom. Ding dongs. If somebody rings my bell. I'm like, what the what fuck the is he talking about? Dude, and this was on ABC primetime. <laughs> like, like fa- families probably gathered around the TV to watch this fucking oh thing. I know, I, I know that there are listeners out there that are, that are, are older than us. And, and if you can recall watching this when it aired, I would love to hear what people's <laughs> initial reactions when he came out and just kids, kids. Like, it reminds me of it reminds me of the Borat skit when they're all in this circle yeah. and they're all saying a word. Say a word. Everybody dance now. <laughs> and the lady was going hum, and the other guy was like hmm. And then the crazy, the strange looking guy goes children. Oh, children, <laughs> children, and then they all doing the same word or going around in a circle, and I got give on children, and every single comment on YouTube is like, "What the fuck? Where is this guy? He's, he's got to be locked up by now." This fucking pedophile is talking about children. <coughs> oh my oh, God, it's just that's all like I'm thinking about. It's just so bizarre. It's just so bizarre. So and then, they're singing the awful song about kids. With the Wicked Witch of the West and some um, and some fucking weird fucking backup dances and costumes and stupid shit. And I heard him mutter the word Alice Cooper at one point in the song. I did pick that up. Yeah. Yeah, they look they look like solid gold like reject dancers in the background. <laughs> like <laughs> And then Donnie Marie make their uncredited appearance come out. Ooh. But it's weird though, because at the very end of the show, he thanks them. Like for for being there, so he they're yeah. not like they, they're not they might not be on the actual like show credits, but he does reference their appearance. Yeah, no, yeah, and, and then uh, Donnie Marie. That's before she started doing her fucking NutriFit <laughs> fucking commercials, whatever she's new. Yeah, when she was like, they were they were they were wicked young on this thing. No wonder yeah. they was kids. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, then they're getting in the car, and the witch is driving him. To get away from the kids. Oh my god. Uh, to take her to her sister's house to get away from those trick and treated kids. Yep. And they go to the sister's house and some witch that must have been big in the 70s and some other skits. Witchy poo. Witchy poo. Yep. I never even heard of it. I didn't I don't know anything. And then when then he turns around and the wicked witch of the West pops out, like that lady, his housemaid Margaret turns into the wicked the witch. witch. Yeah. Yeah, and she becomes that, and oh, wow, ooh, I'm scared. And then, you know, it's just full of, like, corny, cheesy jokes. And that's that his, and that, and that's his, funny, like, that's his thing. That's his shtick. That's what people like. I can and picture, then, like, people, look like, there were grandparents back then on a couch. <laughs> pro- probably. At this shit, like, probably. You know? and, and, and then... And then they talk about then, then he talks about making wishes, you know, because she's a witch. So just when you thought the kids song wasn't fucking bizarre, you skipping a part. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yep. You're right. Go ahead. The, Before the, we... the little the little the little guy comes out. That's right. The little yep. butler guy. He's in yep. everything. And Betty White comes out then. Miss Halloween. 1976. Yeah, dude. She was like 50 then. She looks the, the exact. Out... <laughs> she looks the exact same now. Yeah. <laughs> Betty White. Yeah. Jesus Christ. How long has that woman been in Hollywood? I know. I, Stop, I know. Huh? Yeah. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Then it goes to the three wishes. Go ahead. So so the, the, he, they're making three wishes. So just when you thought the kids song couldn't be more bizarre, <laughs> Paul Lynn wants to be a truck driver 
What was, kind of truck driver? Oh, a rhinestone trucker <laughs> with a cab painted red, white, and blue. <laughs> Take it from there, Zeus. What happens after that? Rhinestone truck driver. Um, At this I point, his first wish. I wish I got a big hairy cock. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ, here we go. I thought that was his first wish. Here we go. No? <sighs> oh, that was that was on the uh director's cut. That's on the direct on the unrated Blu-ray edition. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have Paul Stanley's hairy chested ball bag in my face. <laughs> um so he becomes a rhinestone trucker and he does a skit Dude. with a f- Unapologetic flamboyant song with Tim Conway. <laughs> it is. It, it, it honestly, it, I'm speechless. It's fucking the most bizarre. It makes no sense. It has nothing to do with Halloween. I, like, what are we doing, dude? I became gay from the opening credits. I think you became gay at at this song after that they were singing that song. I don't understand. I'm, I'm like, uh, I, I just I don't. There's anything what, wrong with it? Nope. Oh, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. But then he's so Tim Conway is like at a diner, and then that's when that's when that, that's when Pinky Tuscadero she's like the waitress, and then Tim Conway crashes his truck through the fucking wall of the diner, and like like what do we do? Fight over her, and she's got her fucking rack ha- hanging out. Oh man! I mean, I get. Shell. I mean, oh. I get. I, I get that he called it the Halloween special, and at that time, the variety shows were the thing. So maybe. Maybe it was just an excuse to get a bunch of special guests together to do like a skit show or something, but I don't know what that the doesn't fuck. Doesn't sound like they were doing anything special, Tom. Uh, well, maybe um, in the back of that, maybe in the back of that rhinestone trucker, they were doing something <laughs> special. <laughs> he was drilling the midget in the back of that oh, truck. <laughs> he fit him in the back of the cab there, maybe. Put him in the <laughs> glove compartment. Put her in that fucking book. <laughs> put the put the midget in the glove compartment. Um, so. <laughs> They both want to marry Pinky Tuscadero, and then it's just fucking stupid skit, and then the little guy does something. I don't know. And then they they cruise into a different song, and it's like 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 an auctioneer song or something, a fucking holy hillbilly holdown song. That it's is, like, what the fuck is this? That's weird, dude. It's just it's just bizarre shit. Oh, beyond bizarre. It's just awful yeah. and then he comes back to the place and you know it's funny because it's like a kind of flashback to the times the two witches one's reading rosemary's baby the other one's reading the exorcist yep interesting time yep back then absolutely uh, yeah. yeah so this is when we start liking this because at that point how about a little chamber music a little chamber music <laughs> well that would be nice but uh, where are the musicians Locked up in a little chamber. <laughs> but I can summon them. Oh, they make such very soothing, quiet dinner music. You love them. We call them. Kiss. Oh, not unless you brush your fangs. <laughs> okay, boys. Play something a little peaceful for Mr. Lynn. Yeah, and if you've so if you've never seen this other than what's on Kissology. This is pretty fucking cool. All right. Yeah. Because... So that's the part as we just we just played. Yeah. Where, you know, she says, oh, how about some chamber music? Um, I think that's pretty cool. And they come out and they play Detroit Rock Singer, uh, a singer, uh, singer, Detroit Rock City. And, um, you know, I, I, it's lip sync. But, you know, Kiss comes down on the elevator with smoke and they start jamming to DRC. Um Paul's going nuts. Fireworks are going everywhere. Gene looks like he's in great shape, all fucking energetic, looking like a look menacing. Ace looks like Ace, like he's fucking can't keep his fucking balance. And, you know, Peter's in the back. Um, I know they're lip singing and Paul has like jazz hands. Did you notice that? Oh, a lot I of noticed. Hand move it. Paul, and well, even you, does the steering. No time to turn. Does the fucking hand movements. You could tell you, that you you could tell that they were young and very excited to be doing this because when they came, like you said, when they came out of the elevator and they kind of took the stage, they were like they were like shot out of a cannon. 
I mean, yeah, they, they, they were like, fucking like, moving. I, I mean, Gene and Paul were just like just insane. I mean, I have it written down on my notes. Yeah, just high energy, just going crazy. Yep. A couple couple interesting things I noticed. This is when Paul went through that very short lived phase of wearing the shaded makeup on his cheek area. Yeah. To give to give his face a little bit more definition, he he kind of got rid of that around after this era. He didn't do it for too long. You can kind of see some of the like the light black makeup around his cheek, yeah. like like yeah. kind of define his cheeks and his chin. Um, then he does the little uh, first I drink, then I smoke, and he does the little oh. gesture like he's smoking <laughs> a joint, you know. Oh, he's uh, so crazy. Oh yeah, and then and then they do that effect where the camera spins, you know, the camera's yeah. spinning with the graphic, and then you can clearly tell, obviously. And for all those people out there who think Paul is lip syncing on the end of the road tour, this is what lip syncing looks like. <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly. Th- this is lip syncing. Okay. Um, and then you could tell that they're obviously lip syncing to the destroyer version because at the end of Detroit Rock City, when the car crash, they kind of set up to make it look like the amps were exploding, you know, yeah, with, the, exactly. with, with, with the way the car crashes at the end. Yeah. To cover up the, the car crashing into King right. of the Nighttime World. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Amps blown up, and then it cuts back to the witches playing some witch monopoly fucking game, and then uh, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I don't know if, what's going if, on if, here. <laughs> then he makes an accidental wish that he was some chic, and he's some chic in some place with Florence Henderson. Uh, uh, what the fuck is this? And then, and then and then she's like, "What's up with your earring?" He goes, "Oh, I'm Florence of Arabia." I'm like what? Like what? Like I, I don't I mean again. We were we were we were three years old at this time, so I don't know. This kind of shit must have been the the cool thing for people to tune into, because I don't know what the fuck we're looking at. At one point, they kissed. Oh God, how cringe were they? Were they when those two were kissing? You on- can pretty much tell Paul Lynn has never kissed a woman before. Apparently, do you think Florence Henderson is, is like what the fuck? Or why are all my leading men like this? <laughs> Seriously, she must be like, I got to kiss Mike Brady. Now I got to kiss this guy. What the fuck? At least Mike Brady wasn't like flamboyant. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, but, but like. Mister, you've insulted my kidnapped my wife. But when you use language like that, what was that in the Brady Bunch movie? Yeah, I love that. that was just, like, yeah, all yeah. the shit that guy did terrible. Yeah. But when you use language like that in front of my kids. <laughs> That's so, that, that. That's such a great movie. Oh, my God. The father in that was just perfect. Gary Cole. I Gar- thought he was great. Gar- That's the boss from Office Space. He's awesome in <laughs> everything he does. I know. He's absolutely awesome. Um, so they do the fucking terrible uh, chic thing. Um, it's just a terrible skit in the kissing. Ooh. Yeah, it's, so, just, it's just weird, man. So he has a third wish. And he says, I'll give it to you, witches. Oh, God. And they wish they could go to a Hollywood disco. I know he's been to a West Hollywood disco. Hell, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I say, at this point, I am now officially 100% gay. Um, It's official. Oh, yeah. Disco. I have, I have here, back to the witches, the midget cleaner shows up, disco party with Florence Henderson. What the fuck? Those are my notes that I have written down. <laughs> and I was putting, and Florence Henderson comes out of the back where she was just sucking Jean's cock in the middle, in the back of the fucking show. Oh. Um, and I was like, "Ooh, Florence Henderson, Mrs. Brady's got a fat ass." Ooh, baby. <laughs> oh, we'll get into Florence Henderson at the end of this episode. Ooh, she got Ooh. A fat ass. Um, yeah, and then you know, then they go into this part. Lives. What's next? It's the moment I've been waiting for. What's that? Kiss. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lynn. That's so sudden. <laughs> Ding dong, the witch has flipped. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lynn, we've been talking to Kiss. What is number one with the bullet? Is that like when they say a blast from the past or a golden oldie? No. You're a blast from the past. <laughs> and you're a golden oldie. <laughs> and they're number one with a bullet. At least their new record is. It's called Beth. You two will love it, because Beth is a monster of a hit. Oh. <laughs> yep, and that's the part where they lead into Beth. So this is when Beth must have been really taken off. 
He called it a, like a monster of a hit. Um, you know, and Peter, end of the road, segue. Peter plays the piano. The guys come out at the end. Wink, wink. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I tell you, it's, ve- it, it is very cool because, again, if you've never seen this before, you know, everybody, you know, most people are aware that for the end of the road tour, when they do Beth, at the end of the song, the band comes out and stands there on the piano and it's an homage to this performance on the Paul Lynn show. To see it here, I actually think it's actually pretty cool to see where that started and see it here. I thought it was, I yeah. thought it was, it's really cool. Yep. And, and it's interesting too, because in the Kissology DVD set, Paul had an interesting note about this performance. He said the on the piano that Peter's at, um, there's no keys. It's just a block of wood. There's, it's not even like a, it's not even like a, it's not even like a real piano. Like, like Peter's just sitting behind a, a piece of wood shaped like a piano. And they think that that's about as realistic as Eric now when he plays the piano up there. You said it and I was going to say the same thing. It's probably the same thing, but ooh, we're going to get all we're going to get all the error. We, we talked about that. We talked about that way back in March when we did our episode about our shows. You know, you think he's really playing, but whatever. Who cares? I don't care. It's not oh, no, I don't either. I don't either. Um, you know, and so they, they give it a lot of whatever about, oh, it's Beth and Beth, Peter does a, you know, a, a lip sync job. And, um, you know, and then you get into he comes over and then the band. This is the interaction I want to play it for you, which they talk. Then they go into King of the Nighttime World. So let's hear that. Come on, Margaret. I've always wanted to meet Kiss. <laughs> Hi, fellas. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've always wanted. Four kisses on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> well, your friend sure has a weird sense of humor. Does your mother know what you're doing? Margaret, you haven't introduced me to your friends. Oh, forgive me. This is Ace, this is Jean, this is Peter, and this is Paul. Oh, I love a good religious group. (laughs) I can take one look at you four, and I can tell you how you got your name and how you got your act. You had a fight, and your mother's told you to kiss and make up. (laughs) (laughs) And your makeup is something else. How long does it take you to put it on? We don't wear makeup. Why don't you push the down button on your elevator shoes? <laughs> you know, I have to ask you a favor. Do you think you can find it yourself to go me one more wish? Now, you've been so very good so far, I'll have to say no. Oh, rats. Rats! Anyone who's a friend of rats is a friend of mine. What'd you wish? Ah, a girl. I wish Kiss would do one more song for us. Immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> Any comments about like the segue where the band is talking to him? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool because you got to remember this is this is a couple years before Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. So Kiss fans out there have never heard really like the band like seen them on TV or heard them talk. So to hear you know Gene like we don't wear makeup, you know to hear yeah. that and you know Paul kind of making fun of the jokes, Paul Stanley, I should be saying. Um, I thought it was kind of talking about Paul Fraley. Yeah. I thought it was kind of a cool interaction, especially at that time. Um, you know, the band looks fucking kick ass. Those destroyer costumes and everything. They look fucking amazing. Um, so it's, it's kind of a cool thing. You know, I thought it was cool that they, the the gene voice that you mentioned is the gene voice of, uh, phantom with that echo behind it. Um, I don't think he, it's not as strong. So? It's not as strong as it is in, in Phantom. There's sound effects over his voice here. I think it's just him kind of like, we don't wear makeup. I, yeah, but it sounds like there's some echo like that. It feedback. could be, it, it, it could be, but I, I, I thought don't, it was maybe. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it's as, uh, as severe as the Phantom of the Park voice, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I love that they go into King of the Nighttime World. I love the song, but if you, if you can tell, um, you know, it's cut short. They're missing a, yeah. a verse. Yep. And then uh, Gene does ape arms. Oh, yes. The, the famous King fist Kong pump. Thing, yep. boom, 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 boom off the chest. I love that. Um, you know, and then at the end of this, really, they come back and they do one final disco song with the whole fucking cast. Wait, before, and, we, b- b- before, before, before we get into that. So w- at the end of King of the Nighttime World, one thing that we didn't talk about, like in general, I think that the setup where they're performing 
is fucking unbelievable looking with those flaming chandeliers and like just that that setup that they have. And I think fire f- shooting from the ground. That looks what they have now. Well, no, not that. But if you if you look those those chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, there's they're not candles. There's actually like flames coming out of them. So that yeah. and just the whole stage, I think it's just very like kiss. It just looks like something that they would do. Um, and, you know, and then at the end, and then at the end, you know, Gene does his fire breathing thing too. At the end of King of the Nighttime World, he had to yeah. throw that at, throw, had to throw that at. Yeah, him. I forgot. You're right. Yep. He does the fire. So if you're seeing Kiss, um, well, let's get. We'll get back to this at the end. So the final number that do a whole song, a disco song, with the whole cast. Kiss is on the balcony, and if you look at them when they're on the balcony, they cut to them real short. Yep. They almost look like they're looking down, like, what the fuck is this? I, I, like, I said what the kind same of thing. drug fueled like did I just walk into fucking uh what's the movie? Um Studio Rocky film. Horror Picture oh, Show. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, weirdos underneath, like, what is this fucking who is like what the fuck is this? Well, let's not let's not over let's not go over Florence Henderson's unbelievable performance where that <laughs> Where if that camera zoomed in any further, it would have been up her fucking nose. I mean, <laughs> who who told Florence Hennison that she can sing? Because God love her, she was a terrific Mrs. Brady. But her her the camera follows her over the balcony, down the stairs, onto the floor. She's doing her little shoulder shake and ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, it's it's like she's it's like she's singing like a TV commercial. I'm like what? I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? She was a singer. She was like a country no, I, singer. I know that, but not just not good. But I did notice what. But I did notice when you said with Kiss looking over the balcony. If you watch that, if you kind of like like pay attention to that, it's almost like they're like, "What the fuck is going on down there?" <laughs> Told you, it's like yeah, you're looking down the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, like yep. what the fuck is all this stupid shit? Look yep. at this. Yep, and like they're like, "This is boring." Yep, you know, um, I you know. So let's take a step back. That's okay. the fucking disaster they call the Paul Lind Halloween special. For me, as far as Kiss is concerned, never mind the show is like Bizarro World. Kiss came out, I think, out of this looking super cool. Absolutely. Yep. They looked fired up like, a, like the band that's going to kick your band's ass if you let them perform in front of you. They looked fired up. Hungry, all into it. Special effects. The costumes look great. They look great. They moved awesome on the stage. Everything was fun and awesome. I, I still like, though, it's still always, even back to the early days of 76 now we're talking about, only Paul and Gene have a fucking line. At that point, even if you're Ace and Peter, aren't you like, what the fuck? I, I know it's not a big deal, but why don't I get a line? Well, if you're if you're Ace... You're really left out because at least Peter got to perform Beth. So a- Ace got nothing, you know? Ace just looked like, yeah, hey, I'm Ace. Right. You know? Right. But like, they didn't even get lines. Like, nope. What the fuck? Nope. So that's why when we talk about, like, when we, we mentioned this about bands and Diet Kiss, Paul and Gene were always the leaders. Always. It's yep. different if Kiss continued as, you know, Gene and Ace or. Paul and Peter. Yeah. Paul and Gene are the two that you would say that has to be them. In order for this to continue as Kiss, those two guys have to be there. Yeah. And they they are. So that's why it's still Kiss in my mind. Well, yeah. No, I think you're I think you're right. And I and I, you know, we said it early at the beginning. I I think the best performances here are Detroit Rock City and especially Peter with Beth. And I struggled to figure out why that was left off of Kissology because for years I mean, if you're a Kiss fan, even if you don't know who Paul Lind is, you know the history of the Paul Lind Halloween special appearance. You know it, like you know the Mike Douglas, like you know, yeah. you know, um, you know, no, the, yeah, the, all, you you know the the history. show, yeah, yeah, you know all that. Uh, but mm-hmm. to see it flow in the sh- with the show like this, I mean, you you have to see. It. Like we said, it's free on YouTube. You have to see it. If, even if you fast forward to all the crazy, stupid shit, which you shouldn't because it's so bizarrely entertaining. Um, Kiss does look fucking kick ass in this. They really do. They do. They come across great. Yep. They come across as like, you know, maybe they're out of place on there, but they don't look like a sellout. Do you know what I right. mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't get put into something that and they acted that way. 
Yep. They look like a badass band. Like they're not settling for them. They didn't tone it down for, to be on that show. They were themselves. Yeah. At least no, they, on that they, night. They were excited to be there. Um, and they looked know. like a dangerous band. Like, who the fuck is this? Yep. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, it was cool. I, I highly recommend uh, everybody check it out um, because I'm wondering how many people out there think that what's on Kissology is all they did. They did more than that. So, yeah. And, you know, after our two marathon fucking episodes, we yeah. thought we, you know, we were talking about this. What are we going to do around Halloween? You know, we were talking about what could I be our theme. I'm like, let's do the Paul Lynn. And you're like, oh, there's not enough. I'm like, there's enough there. We can laugh about the fucking stupid shit. I know Kiss ain't in it much, but yeah. we can make an episode out of this. And I'm glad we did, um, you know, because when I think of Halloween in Kiss, I think of this. Yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely. I agree. So, and, 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 and and we we would be remiss as a Kiss podcast if we didn't if we didn't cover this. You, you have to talk about it. And I wanted it to be its own episode. Yeah. Yep. So when you guys if get back to us and stuff, and you talk about this episode as well, please tell us your memories or your thoughts or what you thought was the most asinine, ridiculous, or maybe you come to us and tell us you're that one person who goes, no, what are you talking about? I thought that stuff was funny. Maybe we get that one person that says that. You never know. And if you decide to go to a Halloween party, please somebody dress up as the rhinestone trucker and share a picture. (laughs) (laughs) Kids. I just love them kids. Oh, Oh, yeah. It's the pits. Oh, my goodness. I love big balls. (laughs) Now get in the back of my (laughs) (laughs) 18-wheeler. And bring that little man with you, too. So we uh we have some questions, right? Yes, we do. Like we do every week. So we got one from uh one of our big fans, Stevie on uh Twitter. Uh Stevie! He asked, yes. And Steve is also on Facebook. And I want to give Steve a quick plug here. He just created a Facebook page called the Kiss Phantom Photo Archive page. It's fucking right. amazing. I don't know where he's getting these these photo albums from. You got to check him out on Facebook. It's awesome. Kiss Phantom Photo Archive. It's awesome. Um, good but, shout out to Stevie. Yeah. Uh, he's got a good question. He says, um, which Kiss album have you recently revisited? One that you maybe Ooh. haven't played in a while that you just decided to throw on. What were your thoughts on it? Were you pleasantly surprised or were you like, wow, I'm just not feeling this? Go ahead. Okay. Shoot. Shoot. So for me, with something like this, it usually comes back to like like the eighties albums because I've exhausted the seventies albums so much that I know them inside and out. Eighties albums pretty much. For an album like this, and I think it kind of comes off the heels of the Jericho episode. Um mm-hmm. I put in Crazy Nights. Mm-hmm. I, I I might I know I'm in the minority. I really, really like that album. I real I know it takes a beating. I know it's got keyboards. But it's an album of its time. Um, it's got some songs I'm not crazy about. We've talked about before that some of the Gene songs are strong. Um, I, I enjoy the album. Um, you know, and again, it takes a beating on it. But that was one that I recently, you know, listened to that I wouldn't normally not go out of my way to play. Um, and I was like, you know what? I like I like these songs. You know, I, it is you know it is what it is. Um, but that's how I would answer that question. Yeah. Yeah, you can give Jericho a nice foot rub. While listening to fucking my way, uh, I'll I'll fight hell to hold you. Chris. That's the, that's actually the worst song on the album. But go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh. Um. So me, it's quite easy and evident. Tom, what have I listened to recently? Unmasked. Like I do for every album review, I'm sitting there going, I fucking hate the song. I fucking hate the song. And because I say I hate the song, I don't listen to the song a lot. So then when I get doing an album review, I listen to it a lot. Then I'm like. You know what? That's in my fucking head. After doing the Borat clip with Daryl, I can't get what makes the world go round out of my head. That image of Borat doing the shoulder dance with the guy back and forth. That's in my head. I found out. You're never going to be able to listen to that again. Oh, my God. It's it's in my head. I can't get rid of it. And even she's so European after watching the video, the song that I put on and smashes thrashes and shit is like she's so fucking European, she's so fucking awful. Yep. I, all of a sudden, I'm starting to listen to it. So that's what happened. That's why I love these album reviews. 
you start sinking your teeth into it. And there's so many great albums out there. So many things from kiss that you can fall in love with an album all over again. Well, so, you know? so to answer Stevie's question, so what do you, after listening, after burying yourself and unmasked, not feeling it or pleasantly surprised? Um, no, I'm the same way. It's polarized. Okay. okay. Um, I hate half the songs on Unmask, and I yeah. like, like, I like what makes the world go round way more than I used to. Yeah. I actually can listen to, um, she's so European, um, and you know there are other things, but I'm sorry, but because goddamn Ed Spankenberg won't stop texting us in the middle of our episode. <laughs> I hey, know, fucking Ed. I'll answer your question when this episode done and we'll get into your fucking plug in a little bit, buddy. Hold up. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, I would still say I'm kind of the same, but it's changed. You know what I mean? When you start, you right. can't like, you're always rediscovering things about kiss. Yeah. Like you ask any real kiss fan, what's your favorite album? I don't know this week. Right. 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 So yeah, that's a great question, Stevie. Okay. Great question. What do you got? Another one. This is an old question from our friend Nicholas Gratton. This is from way back in July. Ooh, wait a minute. Who constantly guess every episode? Correct. He didn't. He, he didn't guess this week. Actually, our friend Daryl Albert nailed it this week. Fucking Daryl. But Nick Nicholas is usually pretty good at guessing. We met. By have the to way, make- Daryl, how the, how the Yankees doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, by the way. By the way, how's your quarterback on the Jets doing? Oh. Ooh, speaking of Halloween, he's still seeing ghosts. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's awful. Go Sam, ahead. Sam Darnold. Go ahead, Tom Brady. You're up, buddy. Oh. So I'm, I'm going to edit. So Nicholas's question was back in July when they were taking a break. His, his, but I'm going to edit it for him. I'm going to do some creative editing. His question, right. his question was, what set list changes, if any, do you think they will be on the next American leg? Now, he sent this question in July before they started, but I'm going to edit this question and say, what set list changes do you think that they'll be on the next leg when they go to Australia? Because on the heels of Unmasked, this is end of the road. Do you think that they're going to throw Shandy or something in from Unmasked because they know that Australia loves it? Shandy will play instead of Crazy Nights. You think Crazy Nights will be the one to go? Because that's the one that's been replaced. So it was, do you love me? Crazy night. They'll just keep replacing that one song and they'll put Shandy in there. There you go. That's my thing. They're not going to go more than one. No, I agree. I, I agree that Sh- I, Shandy will definitely be added to the, to the I set. I do list. think they will change the set list when they come tour the U S again. They have maybe to maybe two or three. They have to, they'll get, they more have, shit if they, don't. They, they have, they have, they can't to. be that tone deaf. Oh well, yes, they can. Oh, they can. Yeah. They, they have to at least, throw in a couple different songs. They cannot come back to the U S and do the exact same set list. They can't. Um, mm. but yeah, but no, I, I agree with you. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I agree with crazy nights being the song taken out, but I think Shandy will be, uh, will be thrown okay, in there so for sure. Will be taken out. I don't know. Like we said, they, they know their Australian audience. We have some Australian listeners. Um, maybe there's a song on the set list that maybe doesn't resonate with the Australian fans, the way it might resonate in, you know, over in uh, Europe or the States. I don't know. I think Crazy Nights is a hit for a lot of the a lot of the world. So, but okay. you might be right. You might be right. 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 So, guys, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio. There are a million pod- podcast platforms out there. Generally speaking, we're on all of them. Uh, we thank you to Pantheon Podcast, and that's the network we belong to of podcast. There's a lot of great podcasts on Pantheon. You can find a lot there and listen to them. Um, they've got us on everything. Uh, if you can't find us on something, let us know. We'll try to make sure that we're on there. Um, you can interact with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and, of course, our email. We're trying to make our email a lot more accessible to you guys because we really enjoy getting your emails from you. So our email is shoutedoutloudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Uh, please email us with uh, uh, comments, reviews, questions, uh, suggestions. Tell me to shut the fuck up. Tell me to fuck off. Whatever you want. Tell us what you think. And then please give us one of those five star child reviews. You can give us those reviews on like Stitcher, 
but like iTunes is a great one for us. It helps us a lot. It helps other people find our podcast and get out there to more people. Podchaser is like a, uh, a website for podcasts itself. You can review every episode and review us there. We appreciate those. Tom, you had a couple things you want to talk about with regard to all this. Yeah, so we, we did, as Zeus mentioned with our email, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. We got a couple of emails uh, this week that I wanted to give some props to. So this comes from an Australian, speaking of Australia, Australian fellow named Graham Richley says, love the un, love the unmasked album review. As an Aussie, I could tell you that Gene and his band played She's So European on their last tour here, and they changed the lyrics to She's So Australian. Ooh. Nice. Uh, he said that album has a special place in Australia as that was the, re- that was the release when kiss actually visited. And to be fair, I don't mind the singles off of it. Such as, is that you Shandy talk to me? Shandy still gets a huge sing along in Australia. Um, love the show. Even though Zeus has got some shocking tastes in songs. Yes. <laughs> and we got another email from uh Mac daddy. He says, love the show. Uh, I like the crazy ribbing between the two of you. You guys need another Jeopardy or a trivia episode. Those are my favorite. And by the way, Unmasked sucks. <laughs> <laughs> two guys, two different points of view on that on that album. I mean, I'm telling you, it's like 50 uh, 50. Then we got then on Twitter, we got some uh, interaction here um, with a follower. I, I don't want to mess up his last name, so I'm just going to call him Tom M. If, if you're listening, I don't want to mess up your last name. We both have last names that get messed up all the time. Um, he was kind enough. He said, uh, you guys have a great show, and it's always a great walk down memory lane done in an entertaining way. That's Tom from Houston, Texas. Tom, thank you very much for those words. Appreciate that very much. Um, nice. And then we have a uh, an iTunes review from uh, another friend in Australia. Um, and this is interesting because – the iTunes review and his Twitter username are two different things. So on Twitter, he goes by the name Zandon Black. New fan, loves to interact with us. Cool dude. Um, he says uh, his review, this show is just awesome. A great time to be had and a very funny experience going back over all eras of Kiss and hearing the perspectives of Tom and Zeus. This has quickly become my favorite podcast. I love listening in on the conversations and have listened to nothing else this week. Keep up the great work, guys. If he has listened to nothing else this week, poor guy has gotten stupider. No, he's gotten more intelligent. But anyways, yeah, no. we appreciate those yeah, kind no. words. We appreciate those kind words from everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time and um, a couple couple minutes out of your day to write something nice about the show. We appreciate that very much. Yeah, and that makes our day. And it, Seriously. We'll read them on the air, good ones, bad ones, whatever the hell you guys want. We appreciate it. Keep sending the emails. Keep giving us those five-star reviews. Big help. Um, And again, we're on the Pantheon Podcast Network. We want to give a quick shout-out and thanks to our friend Daryl Alber, who does the um, digital media for Pantheon. Does a lot of great things for us. Poor guy's a Yankees fan. Poor bastard. And uh, he does a lot of the stuff, and he's a great friend of the show. And uh, please give a shout out to Daryl. And uh, last but not least, we'd like to give a quick shout out to our, our texting friend here, Ed Spankenberg, as I call him, <laughs> um, of Click T Shop, who does all the awesome Kiss T shirts. Tom has got one on now. He's got the uh, the what do you call it? It's there uh, on Talis- uh, the talisman. Yeah, the talisman uh, sh- T shirt on now. Click T Shop K L I C K. T E E S H O P dot com, click T shot dot com. They have all your awesome t shirt kiss uh, inspired t shirts and all your shout it out loud, loud cast um, paraphernalia. You can buy everything there. You can make, he's got throw pillows on there now. He's got the Eric Carr exclusive uh, t shirts on there. Um, stuff that is just like, as a kiss fan, you can't. You can't ignore. They're just awesome. And Ed does a great job. He's a great guy. Give him your support. Um, Tom, anything else you want to add before we go to last words? No, I just want to thank everybody for listening and interacting and for the kind words. And uh, like Zeus said, support not just us, but support those other shows on Pantheon and uh, support our buddy Ed with his uh, great kiss stuff. 
Absolutely. Famous last words, buddy. Oh, we're going to dig deep here with this one. Nice. All you martyrs and saviors go through the same door. Listen, all you butchers, saints and sinners. We've all been here before. Deep shit, Gene. Deep shit. Right. Um, I howl at the moon. I pray to the sun. I've got a one-way ticket to kingdom come. Tom, I'm going back to the Stone Age. Oh, good luck. Da-na-na-na-na-na. I like it. Oh, boy. That's a good way to end. Yeah. Tom, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Look at fucking Sonny Pooney. He, now he's bothering us. We're getting emails. From, they, what do they know we're recording on a Thursday night? God damn it. They want to be part of the show. And quotes. Who the fuck is Sonny Pooney? Secondary quote. I fucking hate Sonny Pooney. <laughs> <laughs> and on that on note. That, yeah. Good night. Peace out, Girl Scout. Woo! <laughs>